the bunnies are invading. <laughs> Don't know who that is. Donegal Place. One of the old residential areas of Belfast, which is now the heart of the city's vibrant retail area. On the east corner of Donegal Place, opposite the City Hall, is the Robinson and Cleaver building, which was Belfast's grandest department store. It dates back to 1888 and has carved heads showing 50 of the store's leading customers, including Queen Victoria, and personifications of the countries to which the linen cloth was sent, such as Canada, India and Australia. The same side of Donegal Square is a magnificent red sandstone building, now part of the Marks and Spencer shop. The original use was a linen warehouse modelled on one of the merchant palaces of 16th century Venice. Looking almost due north, you will see a slender stainless steel spike rising into the sky. This is a finishing touch to the Belfast Cathedral, St. Anne's. Work started on the cathedral in 1898 and has continued over the last century, with the steel spike being put in place in 2007. Belfast Green and City Hall sits the Scottish Provident Building, which is another fine example of Victorian architecture. The building was finished over two phases, 1897 and 1904. Just north is the Linen Hall Library. Okay, so I'm in the in Shankill Square, Shankill Road in Belfast. I'm on one of these um, these black cab tours, and he's let us out just to walk around the estate for five minutes by myself. Apparently, it's all completely safe these days. But this is a uh, this is pretty wild. You think of what was happening a few years back. To be doing this as a tourist now is uh, is bizarre. Burnt out houses there, apparently that was where uh, Johnny Mad Dog Adair lived. So pretty, pretty grim. That's another tour just going past. You see Union Jacks and things everywhere, as if they were needed. guilty, you were never seen again. Because you were brought down into the basement and there's a tunnel that runs underneath the basement. Underneath this door, from the new, and into here. And this is from the new jail. The old jail that is not used anymore. Now that jail used to house every, everybody from paramilitaries to what we would call ODCs. And an ODC stands for an ordinary decent criminal. Um, yeah, it was, it was uh, programmed on the it was like, the wall started construction in 1960, this wall and wasn't completed until 1971, but when it first originally went up, it started off as a corrugated iron, which you see along the top of it, the same like the construction that you see now. A lot of people compare the wall to the Berlin Wall, but the difference between this wall and the Berlin Wall, the Berlin Wall was built to keep people in, this wall here was built to keep people out, how do they 
This here is local artists. It's got local artwork put it on the wall. And along here, you can actually see where it says strength and wisdom are not opposing values. And that was Bill Clinton. When Bill Clinton came here, they need to have the cages for protection. The protection from anything being thrown across from the other side of the wall into these Catholic area, this Catholic area. Now, we were on the other side of the wall, and I showed you the rocks yeah. and, the, and the broken bottles and so forth. It happens constantly. You know, it's incredible to think of people in 2009 are living behind a wall of cages protecting their houses. And over here, even these houses over here, the windows that you see in these houses are not glass. They look they're tinted. They're clear perspex in case anything does reach that side as well. So it won't smash the radio fit first. At least so my dad was very impressed. Were you talking to him? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See you well. <laughs> so the dry dock at Harlan and Wolf shipyard. This is where the Titanic was built. Most of my life I wanted to see this spot and I can't believe that I'm here now. 22 years ago I first wanted to see here. See they've got mannequins down there just to give you a size of a, a scale. You can probably just see them in the distance. So the pump house here, still standing. My guide Tom was telling me that uh, it would take an hour and a half to fill that with enough water to float the boat out. I mean, an hour and a half is nothing when you see the size of this. It's, it's huge. Huge. Look, that's the size of my hand. Actually, that makes it look smaller, doesn't it? Um, and he said it was so precise that they could, uh, apparently, they could rest it on eggshells. I don't know if they tried it. Possibly not. But, uh, yeah, it's the old shipyard around. It's all been redeveloped. White Star House there even though the White Star Line only has one ship still surviving, which is uh, the ship that was the tender for, for Titanic, which is, uh, which is another part of Belfast. This is a special, special moment of my year. I reckon. I wonder how many YouTube clips there are of this, uh, of this dry dock. I'm probably going to upload it and find there's hundreds of them. But this is mine.